Is salt really the bad guy when it comes to high blood pressure? What if I told you salt isn't the problem? It's the victim in a crime scene caused by sugar, stress, and insulin. Let's stop blaming the wrong culprit. In this video, I'm going to break down why your body needs salt, especially if you're on a low carb keto or carnivore diet and why cutting salt might actually be harming your health, not helping it. So do me a favor and stick around because at the end, I'll share the one mistake I see most people make when they cut salt and how it could actually make your blood pressure worse. Let's get started. Just today in clinic, I had a patient ask me about salt. I told her, your blood pressure isn't high because of salt. It's high because your body's insulin is hijacking your system. She blinked. Wait, so I don't need to cut salt? And I said, it's not that simple. The salt isn't the root cause of the problem. It's just reacting to everything else going wrong under the hood. Now I know you're probably hearing different messages, some from your doctor, others from the mainstream headlines. That's because most clinicians are reading studies that focus on meds, not metabolic root causes. They're just not up to date with the newer research, like the 2023 study comparing the DASH and keto diets, a study that doesn't usually make it into the standard medical conversation. I'm not smarter than other clinicians. I just trained in functional medicine, which taught me to ask why something is happening, not just what to prescribe. Now I want to talk salt from a mechanistic perspective. Salt isn't just seasoning. It's the traffic director for nearly every cell in your body. Here's what it actually does. Number one, it's involved with cellular hydration and electrical balance. Every cell in your body operates with electrical gradients. Sodium along with potassium helps maintain those gradients. So nutrients can enter and waste can leave. No sodium, that gradient weakens. Cells can't communicate properly. Water can't stay inside the cell. That's why people on low salt diets often feel fatigued foggy or dehydrated, even when they're drinking enough water. Number two, blood pressure regulation. I know what you're saying. Wait, what? Yes, sodium helps regulate blood pressure, but not in the way most people think. In a healthy, low insulin state, your kidneys will filter excess salt naturally. But if the insulin is elevated, the kidneys are told to hang on to sodium. Salt sensitivity in this case is a symptom of metabolic dysfunction, not the cause. Number three, hormone regulation and stress resilience. Sodium plays a key role in adrenal function. When sodium drops too low, your adrenals have to produce more aldosterone and cortisol to compensate. That's extra stress on your body and can cause fatigue, anxiety, even lightheadedness when standing. Number four, digestion and nutrient absorption. Sodium helps produce hydrochloric acid in your stomach. Low salt equals low stomach acid equals poor digestion and nutrient absorption. You might be eating steak, but your body might not be getting all that iron or B12 if salt's too low. Now let's talk about the insulin salt kidney connection. Here's where things get really interesting. When you eat a high carb diet, insulin rises. And when insulin stays high, it tells your kidneys, hold on to that salt. But when you switch to a low carb or a carnivore lifestyle, insulin drops. And now your kidneys say, all right, let's get rid of the salt. This is called natriuresis, the loss of sodium in the urine due to low insulin. This is why you feel tired, weak, or dizzy in the first few weeks of keto. It's not just carb withdrawal, it's a salt shortage. And that low sodium can trigger a secondary rise in stress hormones, making blood pressure worse, not better. So yes, cutting salt in this context can ironically raise blood pressure. So a low salt diet might help someone eating a high sugar processed food diet because it's like putting a bandaid on a broken pipe. It doesn't solve the root issue. It just slows the flood. But for you on keto, carnivore, or any low insulin approach, cutting salt can lead to hyponatremia, which is a low blood sodium, adrenal dysfunction, dehydration, muscle cramps, POTS like symptoms leading to dizziness when standing, brain fog and fatigue, and most dangerously, it can lead to people quitting their low carb journey too soon, thinking it doesn't work for them. Now back to that study I mentioned earlier. In 2023, researchers compared the DASH diet to a well-formulated ketogenic diet. Guess what they found? Keto was twice as effective at lowering blood pressure, twice as effective for weight loss, and three times better for blood sugar control. And yet most most doctors haven't even read the study. Why? Because our system is built around pills. 
not food. So if you're watching this, you're already ahead of the curve. Check out my keto versus dash diet video and I'll be sure to have a link to that video in the video notes. So how much salt do you need on low carb? If you're eating low carb, most of you need four to six grams of sodium a day. That's about two to three teaspoons of salt depending on your activity level, body size, and sweating. Here's how you get it. Add salt to your meals, but be liberal. Sip on salty broth or homemade electrolyte drinks. Sprinkle mineral rich salts into your water. Choose real salts, not table salt, like Himalayan pink salt or Redmond real salt. And remember, if you're Craving salt is not weakness, it's wisdom. Your body is asking for what it needs. So let's recap. Salt isn't the enemy, it's the signal that something deeper may be going on. On a high carb diet, yes, salt restriction might make temporary sense. But in a low insulin state, your body needs salt for hydration, hormone balance, energy, blood pressure regulation, digestion, and beyond. So if this video helped change the way you think about salt, hit that like button. Subscribe for more videos like this and share this with someone still clinging to their low sodium label. And be sure to check out my video on Keto vs. Dash to see the numbers for yourself. Salt didn't break your health, metabolic dysfunction did. But with the right diet and the right information, you can rebuild. Not just your blood pressure, but your energy, your focus, and your life. Stay salty and stay curious.